Hi, it's Warren from the International Colours Academy coming to you from Brisbane, Australia. I'm going to show you a little tip, a uh, thing I use quite a lot in Resolve V9. Let's take this down and get rid of this. Now, if you recognise this footage and you saw a webinar I did at Moviola a couple of weeks ago, it was about matching footage, about matching a sequence that wasn't shot perfectly. If I just disable this guy, we can see there this shot was quite underexposed. And this one was quite overexposed and they came very close to each other. So I talked about matching and how we match a sequence that's not maybe been shot ideally. Exposure difference, colour to temperature differences. Uh, you can still download or stream that podcast over at moviola.com. Today I want to talk about how we can add a look and then animate some shapes on it and then maybe use that look on another shot, another completely different shot. So. I'm going to add a new node here, all S to this, and bring in a circle of power window. If you find you add a window, you can see it there, you can see it there, but you don't see it here. Chances are you just need to go down to this guy and select power window, and you will see the shape. Give yourself a bit more real estate to work with, and go here and click this guy up the top, and then we can move our shape, which I'm just going to bring across in this top corner. I'm going to add some warm colour to this in there, kind of warm in there, and soften it through. I'm now going to animate keyframes, so do yourself a favour and click this button and open this up a bit more. And I only want to animate node 4, which is this one, node 4, and that means correct to 4. So to do that, mark on the drop down menus keyframe timeline mode color that would just select a green bar there that means we can do anything in that bar and it's only going to mark up node 4 not the others I don't want to be animating those I'm going to turn on auto keyframer right click and add a dynamic keyframe that means it's going to start everything then select the shape and do what you want to do to get things started so that's my starting point the grade is going to be like that till it hits the keyframe I'm then going to play on a little bit just before he turns his head make the shape bigger and add more softness and what you can see is that it has made a keyframe I'm going to change the color in there I'm going to make it a bit more yellowy like that and let's see whether we can just soften it off just a little bit more can't seem to do that so let's do this go in here you've got softness controls there always use those as well keep things really soft now what about if I like that I'd like a, another window another color from the other side I'm going to drop back to that starting point there and I'm going to show you options I've got there so it's animating the color yes and it's animating a circle of power window yes if I add another shape, a linear window, and I pop that over this side, center mouse wheel. If you need to move any of this GUI around, just use your third uh, center mouse. It's the third click it's called. There was a guy in Vegas there, and AB nearly kissed me when I showed him that feature. It's quite funny. I'm going to start that like that. And then I'm going to play on, and I'll probably do this one slightly quicker, so that can be there. And as soon as I move the shape, you can see it automatically creates me a keyframe. So now they're dynamically moving at different parts, aren't they? You know, you could still get hold of these and stretch them, make them longer. Uh, you can change either end of them, but you can see they are both dynamically changing. They're getting warmer. So I could change at either end anything that I want to do to create this look. But what I want to do here, I like that, but I want to put that onto here. Okay. Now we know we've done a lot of grading, so I couldn't just go here and middle click and put all of that onto there, because that's going to give me that. Obviously not ideal. So I'm going to undo that. The reason for that, obviously, there's loads of grading under the hood here for those to match. Uh, I'm going to want to put this node there 
on the end of the other one. So I'm just going to copy and paste it. Uh, Apple C or Command C. Go to this guy, add a new serial node, option S, and into there we are going to copy and paste that. And when I open up node two, we can see we've got exactly the same. I've then got exactly the same animations and keyframes that I had in the previous shot of him, number three, now in clip six. I could then change here as well, go in and change any of my colors, all my grades, all my timings, just to be different for this shot. I could obviously start it off a little bit different like this and bring in more softness on this window like that. So this is a great way of copying animations. Uh, when you've done copying, turn off your auto keyframer like this. You could then copy it somewhere else, but it's also really cool if you're doing dailies and you've got six takes all the same and you need to do a similar keyframe through all, just copy the node and then apply it to all your clips. If you want to know more about the ICA and what we get up to, check out these places. We have an iColorist.com website. There's movies on Vimeo and YouTube. My website, warreneagles.com.au. I'm grading out Brisbane, Australia. Uh, Facebook page and Twitter. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your day and enjoy your grading.